Well, Big 12 champions got a nice ring to it. And uh, what, a, what a great football game. Two great teams. Uh, TCU should be in the, in the CFP. They're, they're one of the best four teams. Uh, and uh, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I thought we could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and found a way to win. Uh, it was an exceptional football game. A lot of ups and downs um, between both teams and great resolve by our guys. And, uh, you know, the overtime stop, I, I, it's incredible. You get a third and one and a fourth and one, uh, as good as they are up front and good run game as they have. And, and our defensive line stood up and, and, and stuffed them back-to-back -back plays. And then I thought it was important for us to get a first down and, and not make it a 40-some yard field goal, but get it a little bit closer. And we were able to do that and then uh, executed to perfection our what we call a Wisconsin of getting the ball to the middle of the field for Ty. And then uh, I would say over the last five to six weeks, there may not be a more valuable kid on the football team than Ty Zentner. And Ty was huge again today. And what was just so poetic for me was the ball was on his foot in the last game. Uh, in Big 12 play for him. And uh, there was no doubt in my mind he was making that, no doubt in my mind. So credit to our seniors, credit to our leaders, credit to the culture that they've created, credit to player ownership, uh, the power of belief, all those things, because you know we've had a lot of, a lot of tough times. Um, you know, a lot of people doubted that team after we lost to Tulane and said, must not be very good. And they took it, they took it to heart. And uh, we lost to a good TCU team, lost to a really good TCU team uh, and ended up getting a win. And then we lost to a good Texas team. And we had to go 3-0, and get some help, got some help. And those kids get, went 3-0 and in tough circumstances at Baylor, at West Virginia, home on senior day against KU to have an opportunity to come here. And we talked about it in the locker room. And you can ask Daniel Green about this. We talked about it in the locker room after we beat KU. We weren't coming here for a participation trophy. We were coming here to win the thing. And that was our mindset all week. Uh, and we found a way with a great resolve by a bunch of great seniors. going to be joined by Daniel Green. So if you have a question for either Coach or Daniel, please raise your hand and we'll get the microphone to you. Right here. Tim Fitzgerald, GoPowerCat.com. Daniel, that last stand, um, what, what were you seeing out there and, and what do you think of what happened? Um, I just think that was a great execution just overall by just the defense. You know, we, we talked about um, situations like that just happened to bow up. And that's what games, championship games come down to, just just somebody making an uh, extra play, especially on defense. And I'm so proud of those guys, man. It's, that's that's a statement right there. Like we always say, the mob, mob mentality, it don't get no no more better than that right there on the goal line for uh, the game almost. Coach, Cole Carmody, GoPowerCat.com. Um, you had a lot of young guys out there today on defense. What does that say about not only them, but just the culture that you talked about a little bit earlier. Well, um, you know, you got to rise up. When your opportunity comes, you got to rise up. And, and I look at Jacob Paris that uh, didn't practice most of the week and uh, found a way to gut it out and play. I look at Keenan Garber, that was a wide receiver the entire year, and came to me five weeks ago and said, I'd like to be a defensive back. I want to help the team. And so. He was on scout team up until Thursday of this week. On Thursday, we moved him from scout team and said, you've got to be the emergency guy in case Jacob Paris can't go. And uh, that's the sign of a culture. That's the sign of not wanting to let guys like Daniel Green and Eli Huggins down. And I thought Keenan Garber played his tail off. And uh, uh, VJ Payne is a true freshman playing. And Jacob Paris is a true freshman playing to go with some of those veterans like Josh and, and Drake and Julius and uh, um, phenomenal resolve by those guys. Blair, we'll go to you first. Okay, hey, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City Star. I got one for, for Daniel and the coach, but Daniel first. On, on the fourth down play, what, what were you anticipating? Uh, and did you think Max Dugan might end up with the ball? 
No, we, we did anticipate Max having the ball because usually when it comes down to short yardage or a game on the line, he's usually the guy that carries the ball. But uh, when they got into the personnel, we came out with a with a call that was fit for the personnel. And it just came down to executing, you know, this good on good. Uh, it won up front, up front penetration. And it was just a really big stop for our team. And I'm so proud of those guys, man, because we really work hard for this moment and we really embraced it. And Coach, I, I know we're in the moment here, and uh, but is there any way to put kind of the enormity of this in perspective? This is a program that's – you've won the fourth conference championship in yeah. program history. Um, yeah, I'll let that sink in at some point. Um, you know, I, we, I, I'm fortunate to be here. Uh, Gene Taylor took a chance on an FCS coach uh, when not a lot of people would, but he believed in, in me and us. Um, and then coming here – you know, I look at these guys that believed in us as a coaching staff when there was a coaching change and um, stuck with us. And, you know, the last couple of years, starting in January of 2021, these guys will tell you our locker room became so close and so tight. And, and I'm telling you, this is about the power of belief and the power of player ownership. And uh, when you have those two things, I don't think anything can stop you. On the riser in the back. For Deuce and Daniel, after Ty hit that field goal, you know, he gets carried up on his shoulders. He comes down. The first thing he says in the camera is, I would die for this team. You know, anytime there's a special team like this, everyone talks about, you know, we're such a close group, we're this, we're that. But how much different does this feel? You know, it's not just a cliche. It's an actual thing, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, whenever uh, I got recruited to come here, uh, Coach Kleiman said we're going to build a culture uh, that's going to win championships. It's going to be built on uh, a team, player first, uh, player led team. And, man, we've built that. Uh, and for, for what Ty said right after that, man, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like that's exactly how everybody uh, feels inside that locker room right now. And it's just been uh, battling through adversity, uh, the good, the bad, and everything that we've been through together has brought us so close together, man. That, that's my family. Far back to our left. Coach, you guys ran out there uh, when you needed at the end there. Damian Alalio, redshirt freshman from Manhattan, Kansas. Can you just say what it, what it means to see him do that? He doesn't get a ton of snaps, but when, he, when you needed him on the biggest play of the game, he yeah. got it. Um, you know, everybody is counted on in those times. And, and Damian uh, came in and did his job, uh, as well as everybody else up front and the linebackers. And, you know, this was a pure team win. I mean, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, guys that you expect to make big time plays like these two guys to guys that uh, uh, maybe are a little bit under the radar. Uh, but that's what championship teams do. And championship teams have resolve and we and they count on each other uh, when when it's crunch time. Second row to our right. Michael Goins, go Powercat. Uh, first for Daniel, then for Deuce. Just to the team's uh, perseverance this season and today throughout the game. Um. Like Coach said, it started in January. It's this team coming together and just believing in each other, you know. And belief is what won us this game. Like, we, we came in this game knowing that it was going to be a dogfight and we was going to have to earn it. But we not one second of that game, we didn't believe that we was going to come out with that victory. And that just showed the character on this team, the culture we got, and the brotherhood we got to just fall on each other and believe in each other throughout. Even all the adversity that hit us, we still just kept believing and fighting. Front row. Oh, sorry, when bad. it comes to that perseverance that you talked about, I feel like it's just our our team's will to just go back to work, whether that be after after a loss, getting back into the to the cold tubs, getting everything the recovery on Sunday, and then getting back to work on Monday. Because understanding that man, uh, the preparation, everything that we do Monday through Friday is how we win football games. And then today, uh, whenever adversity strikes, to, to persevere and just say we're going to go back to work as an offense, as a defense, and uh, take it play by play, and that, that's how you win football games. All right, front row in the middle. I got one for Deuce, one for Coach. Deuce, you didn't have a lot of opportunities for explosive plays today, but the one time you did, you made it count. Can you walk me through that 44-yard touchdown? Yes, sir. Uh, we ran like a, a man scheme, uh, like our our uh, no pull power play, and uh, man, the DN slanted and uh, great job. I, I believe it was KT to mash him down, and it opened up a seam because uh, once we playing through uh, Cade, it brought the corner out and uh, a little bit of some space out, out wide, and then after that, it's. Uh, it's one on one with the safety, but um, man, uh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing anything without those guys up front and everybody on the perimeter. And Chris, this was a game of momentum swings. Seemed like every time one team tried to pull away, couldn't happen, ends up in overtime. How did you manage that part of the things? You know, just uh, stay in the fight. We talk about it all the time that you're going to have adversity and you got to stay in the fight. And we talked uh, even this morning that uh, 
field goals aren't going to beat you. And I thought the defense did a phenomenal job a couple times um, on them moving the ball and holding them to field goals. And then we were able to hit a few explosive plays. And um, you know, just I can't say enough about uh, about these guys and the leadership uh, of this crew because you know once we got it to overtime um, and went on defense first. We knew we were going to get a stop, and I'm telling you, if we didn't get a stop, we were going to score a touchdown and go for two. We were going to end this thing, and Will knew it, and uh, offense knew it. But uh, once we got that stop, uh, we were just going to position ourselves and, and let Ty win the game. Back row on the left. Uh, Jake Wilson with UTARadio.com. Daniel Deuce, what does it mean to be a part of this team that has just captured the program's first Big 12 Conference Championship since 2012 from a player's perspective? It means everything, you know. When we come here, and like Deuce said earlier, coach came here to build a culture that wants to win championships. You know, like if you're playing Power 5 football, you're playing at this level of Big 12 football, it's what you came here to do, you know. And just to be able to do it with the, the group of guys that's on this team, this is a great group of men, great group, group of coaches, coaching staff. And it's just really amazing feeling to just see the journey that we was on just since January after the last bowl game to just come in here and do everything that we had set out to do and come out with a victory like that in overtime. That's really, really amazing. I feel, like he, on the, sorry, I feel like he hit on the head. Uh, man, uh, everybody contributed in some way, uh, sort of fashion throughout this year, uh, man, in the building, uh, on the team, in the coaching staff. And, uh, man, everybody just went to work in, in January and understood that this is this is what we wanted to accomplish this year. And uh, so it's big time. It's like a big thank you to everybody that's kind of poured into us as players. Uh, and from our perspective, go out there and play as hard as we can to, to do things like this. Uh, Tori Couchred at College Football Coach. You knew that this TCU team would come back. They've done that in yeah. most of our games this year. Watching that last uh, drive where Duggan breaks off a couple of runs, ties it up, kind of what's going through your through your mind there as you're going potentially to overtime. Well, to try to get our offense ready to go, to try to get a field goal, and we were close. We had a we had a good drive. Uh, Will threw a strike to to Deuce on a slant route on a third down that got us past midfield, and uh, then they did a nice job of, of stopping us. But we were trying to win that thing in regulation. Uh, and, and weren't able to do it. And then, you know, once again, Ty pins them down inside the 10 so they can't mount a drive so that they can win it in regulation. And uh, um, I, I want to say from on behalf of all of three of us up here, uh, K-State Nation came today. That, that crowd was electric. And uh, it was an unbelievable atmosphere. And, and when we were on, on defense, that crowd was phenomenal and can't thank uh, our fan base enough for coming down here in droves and, and cheering on these guys because uh, we were playing for them as much as we're for each other. Brennan Lewis of Levita News here in Fort Worth, Texas. I remember Coach Kleiman um, talking to you this summer at Big 12 Media Days when you stated about Will Howard, um, you know, intending to stay at K State and not transferring. How do you think you have taken it um, as Adrian Martinez have gotten injured and he's now the starting quarterback? Um, these guys will tell you. Everybody in that locker room has so much confidence in Will Howard, and Will Howard's a flat winner. And he's a competitor. He wanted to play. Uh, but I, I credit both Adrian and Will for how this has gone this year as far as both kids helped us win a Big 12 championship for sure. And both kids rallied around each other when the other one wasn't playing. And that's a culture. That's a sign of a group of guys that love each other. And when it ended up being Will's job when Adrian got hurt, Adrian was his biggest fan and helped him a bunch. And uh, you know, Will Howard deserves everything he got today. And um, these guys will tell you, um, the kid works his tail off uh, and uh, is a great, great leader for a young player. In the middle, front. Derek Young, K-State Online. Daniel Green, this time last year, you said you were immediately coming back because this is what you were going to play for. So how rewarding does this experience feel for when you reflect on that moment? Um, it's really just a, a great feeling just to do it with a group of guys that came a long way, you know, like this journey's been so long and it's been um, 
a ride that I wouldn't trade for anything. You know, a lot of adversity, a lot of ups and downs, but we believed in each other, you know, and we believed that we could do this. We set it out from the the, the first time we got back from uh, the bowl game in the winter time, and we said we was going to do this. And just to come out today and do it how we did it today is just really an amazing feeling. Yeah, Max Olson for The Athletic. Coach Kleiman, you mentioned at the start of this uh, the, the losses that this team had to kind of respond to. How did you see this group of guys go back to work after Tulane, after the first TCU game, after Texas? Uh, just the fact that they were they were more upset about it, that they let, let an opportunity slip, whatever it may be. Now, we lost to a Tulane team that might be a New Year's Six Bowl team, too. So maybe they were actually a pretty good football team. Um, but you just you, you can't trip on something that's behind you. You got to focus on the next game. And I thought we played a phenomenal game the next week against an Oklahoma team that I think was ranked fifth in the country, uh, and fought after that. And, and that's the thing we kept talking about, our guys, is don't have an edge just after a loss. Have an edge after a win. And these last four weeks, I think our preparation in the final 48 hours prior to us finishing practice on a Thursday to teeing it up on Saturday has been as good as anything I've ever been involved with of guys owning it, locking into the final details, and playing with unbelievable focus uh, and unbelievable you know, resolve for each other. And uh, th these last four weeks, our guys have been so locked in and razor sharp. Tim Everson, Manhattan Mercury. Coach, uh, Julius battled with, with, with Quentin Johnston throughout the whole game. Yep. How, how big was, was that pick? That it, it was huge. And uh, Quentin Johnson's a, a great football player. I mean, he's a first-round draft pick. And we gave Julius a tough task. Uh, and you, you, you know our defense. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. And, and you're going to lose some. That's, that's part of being a defensive back. You're going to lose some of those situations. But you you got to make sure and stay in the fight. And you know we called a, a great blitz. Uh, on, a, on a third and goal from the eight, and Julius got flipped on it and makes a huge, huge pick to keep him out of the end zone. But that, that's Julius. I, we, Julius wants to be on that stage, and, and that's why he's the player he is. And then R.J. Garcia got, got pushed yeah. into duty for, for Malik after he got hurt. I'm going to let Deuce answer that life. question. Yeah. I'm so happy for R.J. Yeah, so uh, R.J. Garcia has been, I mean, ever since he got on campus, he's been somebody that I've taken under my wing and uh, called a friend. So for him to get in there and uh, after all year, he's behind uh, three seniors, three great football players uh, for us. And, uh, man, he just went to work every single day, frustrated a little bit, I'm just being a younger guy that feels like he can play on this football team. And that's the competitor that he is. But uh, understanding and just going to work every single day, you see it in practice and going to work, going to work. And I told him uh, yesterday, I said, man, uh, why not score your first touchdown in a big time football game like this? And it's actually wild. I, I saw him run down the field, saw the ball get thrown. And when he caught it, man, I, I mean, I just screamed to the top of my lungs and I chased him down. So uh, for him, big time for his confidence, big time for this football team. And that man, that just kind of shows you the type of football player that he is.